Let's see what we got. Got a ball hone. A fuel pump rebuild kit from Aircraft Spruce. We've got Parts. Let's see what we got. We've got two pistons, Teflon coated. Uh, with wrist pins and rings. Um, this should be a coil. Yep, that's an ignition coil. We have a CDI box. Receipt. Um, two needle bearings for the pistons. And a full gasket set for the engine. That's it. Okay, so I've got the cases ready and the crank to be put back together. Um, top and bottom, I have all the hardware in with lock washers. Um, and then we'll need blue RTV for the case mating surface. Um, these rubber plugs that come in your gasket kit for these recesses. Um, the crankshaft O-ring for the front of the crank. Um, I've got a little bit of motor oil um, and I just lubed up the bearing races um, in the top and the bottom case halves. Um, and then we'll need a torque wrench, a 13 and 10 millimeter. I've got them on a nut driver because we will um, hand tighten all of the bolts in the lower half um, while the RTV sets and then you also need a T40 for the front two Allen head bolts and an inch pound um, torque wrench. So um, I did just lube up the bearing races now we can put these um, rubber plugs in here. Um, now take your crankshaft o-ring and this will go around the front bearing of the crankshaft. This is the front with the taper goes to the gear reduction. This side goes to your ignition. Make sure it seats all the way down in the groove, all the way around, um, and then you can set your crank in. Make sure that these metal rings seat in their notches. Um, and before you put your lower half on, make sure that you wipe off your um, case half mating surface and just make sure it's clean so that you can get a good bond with your RTV. Um, you can also put a little bit of 
motor oil around this o-ring to make sure that it um, lasts a long time just because rubber dries out and cracks also helps prevent rust until your first run um, but that's nothing to worry about um, probably should have wiped this off after I put oil on it um, just so there's no contaminants. This specific engine is going on my Fisher Flying Products FP303. Um, this procedure is the same for the 503, the 447, and the 377. This is the 377, um, which I'll be using because my plane is an ultralight and that will help me maintain weight and um, speed requirements. So, um, you're ready for your RTV. You could put the nozzle on and then just clip the end off with a pair of dikes. You don't need a huge hole because we're not going to use a lot. Um, we want enough that it will make a good seal, but we don't want so much that it leaks to the inside of the cases when we tighten our bolts down. <laughs> My hole is a little bit too small. I might just clip it off um, to get a little bit more. Now I'm going around the bolt holes first. Um, don't be afraid to come back and put a little more in areas that you don't think you got enough in. Um, and you can spread it out with your finger or use a glove or something to spread it out. Make sure you go on either side of all of your bolt holes. And everywhere that your cases are going to mate up. I'm obviously no pro, 
but we'll go back in just a second with a glove and spread it all out. Just make sure you get good coverage and once you're done, wipe it off of any internals that you may have gotten it on. You want about a sixteenth of an inch um, over all of your surfaces. That will made up to the other case out. I know it's messy, but it will do the trick. Now I'm going to go back with the corner of this towel and wipe it off of any of the internals that I may have gotten it on. It's not a huge deal if you get a little bit, but it's better to be safe than sorry, especially with aircraft. You can rotate the crankshaft to get better access to any of the parts that you may have gotten silicone on. Okay, um, now that we've got good coverage everywhere, um, we're ready to put the bottom half of the crankcase on. Just touching up a few spots here. Um, just to make sure it's as close to perfect as I can get it. Wipe that off. Okay. Now, this already has oil on the bottom bearing races, um, so I'm going to make sure to wipe off the mating surface to make sure that I didn't get any oil on it because RTV does not like to stick to oil. And the key to getting a good seal um, is making sure your surfaces are clean and prepped and smooth. This will just drop right on. Um, it will have a little bit of a gap because of those rubber plugs, but those keep all the slop out of the bearings. Um, so we'll snug these bolts down and let the RGB set. Um, 
it says one hour, but I'll leave it for two, um, just to make sure that's good and set. Um, and while it's setting, I'm going to hone out the cylinder. Um, I do not recommend using a bar hone on cylinders because um, unless you are trying to remove a lot of material, a bar hone will um, pivot. Um, it has pivots on your um, stones that help it to um, take the shape and size of any cylinders that it is honing. Um, but that also means that it can make a cylinder that's a little bit oblong a little bit more oblong. Um, so I'd recommend a ball home just to try to mitigate that as best we can. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get these tightened down and then we'll see you again in a couple hours.